This month, the Remote Config team announced support for Remote Config for Go servers. I wanted to go through a handful of different ways that we can use server-side Remote Config in Go to our benefit. You might be asking yourself, how can I use Remote Config and how is it relevant to my use case? Or Remote Config for servers? Well, let's say that you have an API that you are in the process of upgrading the backend implementation for. Instead of sending those changes to all your users at once, you can slowly mark that as a feature flag and gradually roll out the change to your users. You can then see the results of this gradual rollout over time to verify whether the change was successful or if it wasn't. Roll it back and fix the errors in production before too many of your users can't complete their objectives. Monitoring these changes allows you to continue to push changes to your project and keep those continuous integration and continuous delivery engines going. You can also use Remote Config to make tweaks to your project in production without doing a new release. If you're running an AI application, maybe powered by Jenkins for Go, which also came out this month, you can switch to a different model from the Remote Config backend without redeploying your app. This allows you to easily upgrade to newer models over time. Let's take a look at adding remote configuration to our server environment. As an example, we are going to be running a fictional code store called Coder's Cache. We want to test a new checkout flow, but we want to do it safely so we don't take our website down if things go wrong. What we will do is roll out this feature to a small percentage of users based on randomization ID. In this case, it will be a randomly generated string. So if a user does run into the issue, they can refresh their page and hopefully get the old version of the cart. We can then record metrics of how many folks were able to finish checking out on that new page after we made the change. We start by going to the Firebase console and visiting the remote configuration page. Once there, we want to switch to the server configuration setup by changing the dropdown next to the heading remote config from client to server. Next click create configuration and enter a new configuration. Ours is for a new checkout experience. So we will give our configuration parameter a name of new checkout and set the default value to false. Once this is done, we'll go and add a new condition visiting the add new button at the bottom of the screen. We will choose a random percentage as a value and then set it from zero to 2%. This means that 98% of the time, our users will see the first checkout flow, whereas 2% of the time, they'll see our new checkout flow. One last thing before we start writing some code is that we need to press the publish button. Let's move on to wiring this up in our Golang server. We start by going to our Go server and initializing Firebase in our remote config service. Once this is done, we set a default configuration with some values that we want to be used in case our configuration on the Firebase servers cannot be reached. As you can see here, we reuse the new checkout parameter that we use in the remote configuration new parameter screen. Once that is done, we can pass that into get server template and that loads our server side template. Now to evaluate the results and determine the checkout flow we want to serve, we first need to create an evaluation context and assign it a randomization ID. Depending on what experience you want to deliver for your users, you could either use our user ID, which would deliver a consistent experience for that user, or you could do as we are doing and use a totally random value. Once this is done, we call template.evaluate, passing in our evaluation context, and we get back out our server configuration. Here, we can then call config.get boolean and pass in the parameter name we defined in the remote config dashboard earlier. In this case, it will be new checkout. If new checkout is true, we serve the new checkout experience. Let's verify that this is working. I'm going to visit my demonstration site and on first load, I get my original checkout page. It may take some refreshing before I see the new page. So give me a moment while I continuously refresh. Since the experimental group was so small, it took quite a few key presses to get there. This is what the new checkout flow looks like. We can now verify whether users prefer this version of checkout or the other version. And if we don't see the results we expect with the new version, we can easily roll it back or roll it out to 100% of all our users gradually. I think I really like this version. With a few lines of code, we can customize the experience that our users are getting in our app without having to redeploy our clients or servers for a new experience to be delivered. All we have to do is update a template in our backend. 
If randomization values are not entirely useful for you, you can use custom signals such as device type, language, and other values to derive new experiences for your users. There's also a pretty great video about it, if I may say so myself. If you're more of a reader, I will link the documentation below. If you do something cool with remote config, leave a comment down below letting me know what you configured. I am Noe, and I cannot wait to see what you build next.